Item number, SCP-508. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures. SCP-508 requires no special containment procedures, so long as it is kept out of direct view of any SCP staff. At least 1% of SCP-508 must remain covered, except when actively being tested. It is currently kept in a small closet, with no windows or ventilation. The door is to be kept securely locked at all times. If SCP-508 is to be tested, it may be sealed in an opaque container and transported to any environmentally sealed testing room available. Due to the potential risk resulting from its secondary effect, the room is to be sealed using positive pressure and sanitized using when the test is complete. Unless there is a strong need to preserve the test subject, they also should be sanitized using in the event that the subject must be retained, they should be held in quarantine for a period of no less than days. Description SCP-508 appears to be a random dot stereogram poster of dimensions 255 by 197 centimeters. Caution must be taken when interacting with it, as even a cursory glance may fascinate the viewer, giving them an overwhelming desire to properly view the hidden image. Viewing the image appears to only be possible when the viewer stands one meter in front of the image and stares directly at it. Attempts to view the image via mirrors or having multiple subjects attempt to view it have failed, with only the properly positioned subject able to see the image. In testing, achieving proper focus to be able to view the image has taken an average of 93 seconds. Subjects exposed multiple times appear to view it more quickly, but never in less than 60 seconds. Once the viewer has achieved proper focus, the poster seems to function as a window to some other location. Effect 1. These locations range from the banal, e.g., a view of the same room but from the perspective of a different wall, to surreal, and potentially maddening. In addition, the window appears to function bi-directionally, exposing the viewer to the gaze of whatever is being viewed. Regardless of the time required for the viewer to acclimate to the needed focus for the image, after the same amount of time has passed with the user viewing through the window, the interface appears to undergo a secondary change, effect 2, and becomes permeable, although only to the viewer and the viewed subject or area. The requirement for viewing appears to extend to the secondary effect, even in the case of event where the subject was dismembered and pulled through the image. Two other subjects in the test room were unaffected. Addendum. Photographs, scans, and copies of SCP-508 do not inherit its primary properties, as the user is unable to see more than a strangely compelling blur. All such copies should be kept filed away, and no personnel shall view them for more than minutes in any given hour period, as extensive viewing has been shown to induce an overwhelming desire to see the original. Effect 3. If the subject is unable to see more than 1% of the image, due to it being partially covered, obscured, etc., neither effect is demonstrated. Copies of SCP-508 show the same limitation with regards to Effect 3. Addendum. Careful removal of the backing material revealed a price sticker, indicating SCP-508 was sold for $14.98. No indication of the store from which it was sold was found nor was the UPC code able to be matched to any known database. Test Logs Experiment 1 Male subject D-9211 was exposed to SCP-508 and told to make note of any image perceived. After 93 seconds, subject began to giggle. When asked to explain, subject blushed and stated, Oh, nothing? I just… nothing really? Just a funny view? Later interrogation revealed SCP-508 to have provided a view into a women's changing room at a local department store. Subject terminated 0710, 1623 hours, due to unreliability. Experiment 2 Male subject D-4599 was placed in a chair in front of SCP-508, without instruction. The subject was seen to glance at SCP-508 momentarily look around, then return to observing it with a perplexed expression on his face. After 102 seconds, 
Subject appeared to enter a state of extreme agitation, sweating profusely and attempting to draw back from SCP-508 without leaving the chair. After an additional 102 seconds, Subject suddenly became very pale and attempted to leave the chair. After moving less than 12 inches, Subject screamed and collapsed to the floor. Examination of Subject revealed an 11-centimeter cylindrical segment missing from the left side of the Subject's abdomen. The edges of the wound appeared to be cauterized. Autopsy revealed that death occurred due to severe systemic shock. Experiment 3 Male subjects D-8788 and D-7422 placed in test chamber with SCP-508 and instructed that the first to identify the image would win a prize. After several minutes of vying for position, the subjects both began to scrutinize the poster. After 87 seconds, D-7422 suddenly turned his head away in disgust. Inquiries as to what had become visible were not responded to, and subject was remotely terminated. D-8788 was advised to resume the test, on pain of suffering the same disposal. After 92 seconds, D-8788 suddenly smiled and moved closer to SCP-508, before tapping on its surface. Subject appeared surprised to find a solid surface, but continued to observe. After an additional 87 seconds, the subject was seen to lift his head and sniff, then suddenly dive at SCP-508, passing through its surface with no resistance. Subject D-8788 has yet to be located. Experiment 4 Male subject D-4431 and female subject D-6744 placed in test chamber with SCP-508 after being shown footage of Experiment 2. Both subjects sat on the floor facing away from SCP-508 and began to talk. After several minutes, D-6744 shook her head in response to a comment made by D-4431 and inadvertently allowed her gaze to rest upon SCP-508 for less than one second. Although visibly shaken, she looked back at it repeatedly for the next 10 seconds, before changing position to obtain a better view. Repeated warnings from D-4431 failed to dissuade D-6744 from attempting to view the image. After 103 seconds, D-6744 suddenly blanched and began to vomit. Subjects were then removed and interrogated. Subject D-6744 was unable to describe what she had seen, stating that it was somehow wrong, but in a way she could not explain. Subject D-4431 admitted to looking at SCP-508 after seeing D-6744's response, but claimed to have seen nothing. Subjects quarantined for potential future testing. Experiment 5 Female subject D-9801 instructed to enter test chamber, observe SCP-508, and report back. After 93 seconds of observation, the subject was heard to exclaim, Oh, that's neat. Interrogation revealed subject to have seen an image of herself in what she thought was some kind of experimental mirror. Subject also noted that the image was not reversed from left to right, as would be the case in a conventional mirror. Subject quarantined to be used for future tests. Experiment 6 Male subject D-6621 shown video of Experiment 5 and instructed to enter test chamber, observe SCP-508, and report back. After 97 seconds, subject D-6621 made sounds indicative of disgust and stated, Ew! They can't make it in here, can they? After an additional 97 seconds, D-6621 suddenly demanded to be let out and moved to the farthest point in the test chamber from SCP-508. After 43 seconds of the subject becoming increasingly agitated and demanding to be let out, the subject suddenly began to scream and swat at his legs. Analysis of the video log shows that the subject's legs appear to be being bitten by a large number of small creatures. Based on concurrent wounds, at least 27 bites were being inflicted at any one time. After 14 seconds, the subject collapsed, whereupon, the subject began taking wounds over his entire body. After an additional 14 seconds, the subject lost consciousness. Within seconds of the subject being rendered unconscious, all damage ceased. Subject was unable to be returned to consciousness, 
and was terminated 2110 0217 hours. Autopsy revealed the bites to be consistent with those of unusually large bed bugs, with traces of a neurotoxin found within the wounds. Experiment 7 Repeat female subject D9801 instructed to enter test chamber, observe SCP-508, and report back. After 81 seconds of observation, the subject was seen to turn about several times and state, Oh, well, that's… different. Interrogation revealed subject to have seen an image of herself as seen from behind. Upon turning around, subject saw what appeared to be an identical copy of SCP-508 behind her. No such object appears on the video log. Subject quarantined to be used for future repeat tests. Experiment 8 Male subject D-2232 placed in test chamber and told that he would be rewarded if he could properly identify the object shown by SCP-508. Subject had been fitted with a remote activation tranquilizer collar to test the effect loss of vision through unconsciousness would have on effect 2. After 87 seconds, subject leaned forward and stated, Wow, I didn't know these could show live images. Who is that? Subject was advised to continue observing. After an additional 87 seconds, the subject made a come here gesture towards SCP-508. Six seconds later, video surveillance shows SCP-507 climbing out SCP-508's frame. 507 indicated appreciation at being retrieved, as his most recent shift had interrupted his lunch. SCP-507 was permitted to return to his normal routine. Subject D-2232 terminated due to security risk. 2910, 0427 hours. Tranquilizer collar recovered for future testing. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-507, Reluctant Dimension Hopper, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist. <laughs>